Coming up on Dare to Love Muslims. He was a sniper fighting against the Israeli army for his homeland Palestine under the leadership of Yasser Arafat. Now he's helping Muslims live for Jesus. Join us today as Samya talks with Taz Sada about life growing up Muslim in the Middle East, his eventual move to the U.S., and conversion to Christianity. It's an encouraging story you won't want to miss. Hi, I'm Samia Johnson, bringing you a new way to think about our Muslim neighbors. Is it possible for God to change the heart of a Muslim turned into a jihadist sniper born in the Gaza Strip? My special guest today, Taz Sada, will answer this question and more. He's a former Muslim who, as a teenager, joined the Fatah Palestinian forces that was founded by Yasser Arafat to wage war against Israel. Brother Taz, welcome to the show today. It's so good to be with you, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start from the beginning so that uh, whoever is watching us today will know where you are from, where you were born, and who is your family. Uh, my family originally come from the city of Jaffa near Tel Aviv. Uh, they've lived there for centuries. But before the war of 1948, they uh, moved to uh, the Gaza Strip to escape the war, basically, hoping to return. But uh, as we all know, they lost the war. Mm. And so they got stuck in Gaza, and that's where I was born, the Gaza Strip. What uh, was the religion or the faith you were born into? Islam, of course. Islam. Yeah, I was a Muslim. When do you remember starting to practice Islam, like the five-day prayer, the fasting? Do you remember when you started? Well, since I was a little kid, you know, maybe six, seven years old, I, I would follow my father, just imitate my father, basically. Mm. Yeah, I love my father, so I, I followed his steps. When he went to pray, I went with him to the mosque. and, mm. and my father was not really a very devout uh, Muslim, uh, but on Fridays he went to the mosque. Mm. I don't recall, we did Ramadan, and Ramadan we fasted, they fasted, I, I didn't fast very much mm -hmm. as a kid. Tell me about uh, your teenage years. Did you ever go back to Gaza or to Palestine, or where did you spend it? Well. Uh, growing up in, in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, being referred to as a Palestinian immigrant and refugee, that just raised a lot of anger and frustration in my heart mm. uh, towards the Jews, because we believe they are the one who caused us to be uh, immigrants and refugees. Mm. So when we lost the war of 1967, uh, I decided to go and fight, and my father didn't want me to do that. How old were you? I was almost 17. I was not even 17. Mm. So I asked my father's permission, and he said, no, you continue your education. We're giving them a lot of money. Mm. And I didn't listen. So I ran away from home and joined Yasser Arafat. He was my hero. Joined him where? In which country? In Jordan. You joined him in Jordan. Yeah. First, I went to Syria mm -hmm. and submitted to uh, Fatah intelligence in Syria. Mm -hmm. They interrogated me, then mm -hmm. they sent me to Jordan for training. Brother Tas, I think this is a great time for us to take a short break and watch a clip so that our viewers will understand uh, the militias that were founded during that time to wage war against Israel. Let's watch. While the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has a history that goes back thousands of years, the modern-day catalyst for renewed fighting was the partitioning of Palestine into two separate states by the United Nations General Assembly in November 1947. This two-state solution, with Jerusalem being under international control, only led to increased bitterness and hatred between the two people groups. By the early 1960s, the Palestinians had begun to unite forces to reclaim the land they felt was theirs. The first named group to emerge was Fatah. Founded in 1959 by Yasser Arafat, Fatah's goal was the destruction of Israel and the spread of Islam. Fatah was the largest faction of the confederated multi-party Palestine Liberation Organization. Arafat went on to lead the PLO from 1969 until his death in 2004. Another group that began later in 1988 is Hamas. Hamas was founded as an offshoot of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood. 
The main goal of Hamas is to free Palestine from Israeli occupation and to establish an Islamic state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Hamas and Fatah refuse to work together and are in a bitter fight over who represents the Palestinian people and how Palestine is to be represented. In 2006, the political momentum favored Hamas as they won a decisive majority in the Palestine parliamentary elections over the Fatah party. Today, they remain the two main political factions in Palestine. Hamas essentially controls the Gaza Strip and Fatah controls the West Bank. Sada joined forces with the Fatah Palestinian organization and he became a fighter in Jordan. Brother Taz, tell us about that period. Joining the forces as a young Palestinian, I was very anxious, very, uh, that hatred that I had in me against the Jews was showing up pretty, pretty strongly in the battlefield. And mm. so I was, uh, severe in the battlefield to where I was given the title butcher. Butcher? Yes. Where was the battlefield? Because you said you were trained in the camps in yeah. Jordan, but did they send you to other places? Oh yeah, yeah. We went across the river into uh, Jericho and then from Jericho into other areas mm -hmm. uh, looking for Israeli army, attack them and then run back to Jordan, mm -hmm. swim the river. And so, yeah, we were attacking the Israelis in, uh, but we, uh, in, in Fatah, we were focused more on attacking the Israeli army, not mm -hmm. civilians. Mm -hmm. And so that part was our work. So what was the ultimate goal behind this? Uh, to put fear on them to run, basically, so we can get our homes back. So it was mostly political, not religious. No, Fatah was never a religious organization. Mm. They're still until today, they are secular. Uh, not, not like Hamas and uh, Al-Amal and all those organizations. Mm -hmm. How did you reconcile what you were doing and killing people with your religion? Um, I didn't fight because of the Islamic religion. Mm -hmm. and, and most of us in Fatah, we never fought for the Islamic mm -hmm. cause. We fought for a homeland. Mm -hmm. For home, our So homes. did you practice Islam during that time? Of course, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I was a Muslim, so I, I did practice the faith. But the battle was not really waged because we had an Islamic cause against the Jews. I, I never really looked at that, at least in my own self. Uh, I fought for a homeland. Uh, we are refugees. We are called refugees every day of our life, and mm -hmm. I'm tired of that. I wanted to have a home back. In, in the Holy Land where I grew, where my, my family grew up. Talk to me a little bit, uh, Brother Tass, about uh, the Palestinian Christians who are living maybe in the Israeli part or the Palestinian part and the uh, conflict that they have, they don't feel they belong to either party. This is what I hear yeah. at least. Yeah, that's true. That's what I have experienced as I went into the land uh, mm. and began to live there since uh, seven years. Uh, the Christian Arabs are in a very, very tough position. Uh, both sides are trying to draw them to their side, and so th it's very difficult for them to balance out. Uh, you know, they w b biblically we know that we are we are believing in the existence of Israel, mm -hmm. but then uh, patriotically, uh, if they voice that out, they they will be condemned for mm -hmm. it by the Muslims. And so they are persecuted by both sides, actually. And, and that's, uh, that's really a very difficult uh, position to be in. Let's go back to when you were a Muslim and you were fighting. Were you ever close to death? And uh, were you afraid to die? I, I was not really afraid to die. Uh, I was close to death many, many times. I, uh, Especially in a battle that we led against Israel, the Israelis came across the river to try to finish us up. And uh, we took them on and, and we won the battle against Israel mm. called the Battle of al Karama. But you were not afraid. What did Islam provide for you so that you were not afraid to die? Were you sure you would go to paradise because you might die as a martyr? As or you didn't think about that? Very interesting point that you bring up. 
I remember I was with Yasser Arafat in 2004. Mm -hmm. I was visiting with him, trying to witness to him. I remember this phenomena that was coming up so strong uh, lately at that time. Mm -hmm that uh, if you die in, in the cause of Allah, you go to heaven, you get 72 virgins and all of that stuff. Yes. So I looked at Arafat and I said, you know, I have a bone to pick with you. He said, oh, why? <laughs> I said, you never told me if I died in the battle, I go to heaven and get 72 virgins. He looked at me and smiled and came closer and he said, do you really believe that? Wow. <laughs> So he, he didn't even believe that himself. Yes. So you moved to the U.S. and eventually married a young American woman. I want to talk about that uh, later, but uh, right now let's take a short break to offer you, our viewers, an opportunity to learn more about Taz Sada's biography, Once an Arafat Man, and to introduce the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, known as the Palestinian Territory, an area of the world that truly needs Christ. Today's Palestine was once a part of the land God promised to Moses and his people. The Bible called it a land flowing with milk and honey. Palestine is comprised of two separate parts, the West Bank, a land on the west bank of the Jordan River, and the Gaza Strip, which runs along the Mediterranean Sea and borders Egypt to the south. Of its 4.5 million inhabitants, 87% of Palestinians are Muslims. The rise of Islamic extremism is the most active threat in this land of constant poverty and hopelessness. The few Palestinian Christians who live there find themselves attacked and betrayed from all sides. They are considered Arabs by the Israelis and spies for the West by Muslims. Witnessing to Muslims is prohibited in Palestine, so Muslims have very few opportunities to hear the gospel message. Pray for the Lord to bring peace to this hot spot of the world and to open the eyes of the Muslim Palestinians to recognize and know the true God of the Bible. Get all of your questions answered by Samya right here on Dare to Love. Just email your questions to ask at daretolove.tv. From hatred to love, from despair to hope. Once an Arafat man is the story of a PLO sniper and driver for Yasser Arafat who found that he was destined for greater things. Learn about the life, struggles, and heart of a Palestinian refugee, a Muslim who converted to Christianity and faced persecution at the hands of his relatives. Once an Arafat man, get your copy today. Call us at 832-220-4040, 832-220-4040. To order online, visit our website, daretolove.tv, daretolove.tv. I'm still chatting with my special guest, Taz Sada, who's a former Palestinian fighter. Brother Taz, so you arrived to the U.S. and you found out that you were more accepted here as an immigrant Correct. than in an Islamic country, Saudi Arabia, uh, where you lived most of your uh, young life. Tell me about this new life that you started. You came here, did you come as a student or a tourist? I came as a tourist, actually, hoping to become a student. I realized the American people really didn't hate me as, as I thought it, they did. And so I decided I wanted to live in this country. Mm. So I asked my friends what would be the best way to stay in America. They said to marry an American girl. So the best way to stay in America and get your citizenship to marry an American girl. So I went hunting for an American girl. How old were you? I was 23 years, mm. 23 years old. When I saw her, I thought to myself, that's my girl, or my victim. It's, or my uh, victim. <laughs> it's however you want to look at it. Yes. And so I started calling her every day. For three days, I call her. She will talk for three and four hours. And on, I'm on the other end, not understanding 95% of what she was saying. Not understanding. No. <laughs> but I just kept humming, and yeah, uh-huh. Finally, after three days, I proposed. You proposed after yeah. three days. Oh, yeah. I said, please marry me. She said, man, you're crazy. I just met you three days ago. I said, it's okay. It's okay. Marry me. Mm. 
And, and was the whole intention is my visa was almost expiring and I was desperate. I yes. needed to get something done. Yes. Well, of course, she didn't agree, but I didn't give up. By October of 1974, we got married. Yes. And I, my intentions were to marry her maybe two or three years at the most and then say goodbye. Divorce her. Yeah, mm. but thank God he had better plans than mine. And so I went to work and I found a job as a dishwasher at a French restaurant in mm. Kansas City and I worked very hard. And the people liked me and so they started teaching me cook French food and then took me to the dining room to work as a busboy. Mm. And that's where I met my first customer. I went to his table to take his dirty dish away and I was very nervous. My hand was literally shaking. Mm. And uh, the man sitting at the table was uh, by the name of Charlie Sharp, who was a, a, a longtime customer of that place. He looked at me with such a beautiful smile and said, thank you, young man. And I thought, wow, this rich man is thanking his servant. Yes. That really touched my heart. So I decided I'm going to take good care of this man every time he comes. Mm. And that began a relationship that went on for 19 years. And he had peace about him that really in, I wanted so bad. Charlie came to dinner in, in mid-February of 1993. And he was telling me about a building I should go to look at for the restaurant. And I happened to have gone to the same building just three days before. And this building was an old uh, funeral home mm. where they fixed dead people. Mm -hmm. In Islam, we were taught that any place you go to that have had dead bodies or dead people have demons and ghosts. Yes. So when I went in there, I was so terrified, I physically ran out of there. Mm -hmm. So when Charlie told me about this building, I said, Charlie, I was in that place just three days before, uh, three days ago, and man, when I walked in this place, I felt creeps all over the place, demons and ghosts. And he laughed at me, and then he looked me straight in the eye with such a boldness and confidence. And he said, Tass, do you know why you felt this way? I said, no, why? He said, because you don't have the fear of God in you. Mm. I said, Charlie, I'm a Muslim. I fear God. He said, no, you don't. But not to worry. I can help you with that. I can fix it. <laughs> and then he points his finger to the sky and says, I have connection. I laughed at him and I walked away. But that word connection just stuck in my head. I kept thinking, what is this connection? Mm. So I, I keep calling Charlie and he would not tell me. Uh, three weeks went by, I got to the point where I'm so messed up, I could not focus on anything except that word connection. Mm. So finally, Charlie decided I was ready. He took me to his house and he was talking to me on the way to his house about miracles in his life. His voice changed, his language changed, everything about him changed. And I couldn't understand, why is he talking like that, you know? And so we got to the house, he's opening the door and still talking, and he said, Tass, to have the peace that I have, you must love a Jew. And I froze. Wow. Literally. I was getting so angry. How dare him even think that I have to love a Jew? And he knew. He knew he was hurting me. But I thank God for his love for mm. me, that he was telling me the truth. He calmed me down and said, let's go sit down. So I went inside. I said, what is this connection? He said, what do you know about Jesus? I said, I know Jesus. I believe in him. He's a prophet. He's a prophet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, well, he's more than a prophet. I said, what is he? He said, he's the son of God and he's God. I jumped off that sofa and blasphemy. I said, Charlie, me, that's a blasphemy. I don't believe in this. I don't know what's wrong with you, man. I'm getting out of here. And I was storming towards the door. He called me back. He said, Taz, calm down. You are so worked up. Just come back, sit down, give me a minute. So I went back, sat down. He went, he brought his Bible. And he put his Bible between the two of us. Mm. When he did that, I jumped away from it. He said, why did he jump like that? And I said, I can't touch that. He said, why? It's just a piece of paper. And he was flipping the pages. I said, no, no, no. It's got the word of God and the name of God in it. Mm. He says, so you believe this is the word of God? I said, yes. Why did I say yes? When we as Muslims really don't believe that. You it's don't. still valid as the word of God. Mm -hmm. 
So he said, okay, if you believe this is the word of God, let me read to you what it says about Jesus. He said, go ahead. So he opens the Bible, he looks at it, and he smiled, and then he began to read to me. The Bible automatically opened to the book of John. Chapter 1? Chapter 1. He said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Hallelujah. in the beginning. Mm. And I started shaking, and I lost conscience. The next I know, I'm on my knees with my hands lifted up, inviting Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. From darkness into light. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, when I started reading the Word to you, it started shaking violently and you were taken off the sofa in the air, and you were brought to your knees, and your hands were lifted up, he said, and you started speaking in a language. He said, I didn't know what you were saying. It was not English. Praise you, Jesus. I was speaking to a light that was saying to me, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way to the Father except through me. That was a vision. That was. The Lord was speaking to me. And in a way, the Holy Spirit explained to you who Jesus is, and, Instantly. Uh, you understood everything, and that was the birth. And, and I instantly believed in the Trinity. I never really questioned, until today, Hallelujah. I never questioned the Trinity because mm. I just felt I knew exactly who that was, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that have come all together and overwhelmed me in that way and, and believing in them. Tell me about the change uh, in your life as a husband and as a father, after you became a Christian, what was Karen's reaction and how did you change? The first week I was saved and I was sitting in the living room and Karen was in the kitchen doing something. And I'm looking at her and suddenly uh, emotions I was feeling for my wife I never experienced before. I was really... I literally jumped off the sofa, excited and screaming, Karen, Karen, I really love you, girl. Hallelujah. For the first time in 19 years. Mm -hmm. She would, all through the 19 years, she would tell me how much she loved me, and I would say, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I never really felt that love for her. Mm -hmm. And that week, just uh, that day, uh, I, I felt these emotions for my wife. And I, I, I was screaming, and, and she was sitting, standing there, I think she was cooking something. And uh, she just looked at me with the side of her eye, said, okay, what do you want? Mm. I didn't really blame her. I, I wanted to wait on God to show her truly there is something happened here. And thank God, 45 days later, she did. She Hallelujah. did give her heart to the Lord too. And you've been married for 41 years. Today, we are 41 years. Talk to me a little bit about what God has called you to do, what you've been doing lately. You know, those people that I've hated the most mm. suddenly become on my heart the most, mm. the, Jews, the Jewish people. I, I keep thinking about them, and I keep thinking that there must be a calling on my life for them as well. Mm. And so I kept seeking the Lord, and eventually I realized that I was called to reconcile Arabs and Jews to Him. And then once we are reconciled with Him, it's easy for us to reconcile with each other. Amen. The work of the cross. Amen. And, and that began a journey in my life to reach out to the Jews, to the Muslims, to the Arabs, to uh, anybody that comes across me. I just share my, my story with them. And... Uh, and that's what we are doing today, is trying to, to bring healing. Amen. See, the conflict in the Middle East uh, between Arabs and Jews, uh, most people, even in the churches, they think it's when the Jews return to the Promised Land. And this is not the truth. It's, it goes back 4,200 years. Mm. And that's because man did not wait on God to fulfill his promises. Yes. And... Uh, so the story goes back, you know, so many leaders around the world have tried to bring healing and reconciliation and, and, and solution to this conflict, and they fail because they are not looking at this conflict as a spiritual conflict. Yes. They're looking at it as a political conflict. And they're not looking at it as a conflict between families. Mm. 
This is the longest family feud ever in history of mankind. Yes. The conflict between the Arabs and the Jews. Thousands of years. Thousands of years. From right. Ishmael and Isaac. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Thank you, Brother Tass, for a wonderful time, wonderful testimony, and may the Lord continue to use you in a mighty way and anoint you with Karen as you serve among the Jews, the Palestinians, the Muslims, and the church worldwide. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you. Thank Amen. you for having me here. I want to remind you uh, to get your copy today of uh, the biography of Brother Tassada's book, Once an Arafat Man. It is a great read. And uh, before I go, I want to thank our partners and those who pray daily for us as we carry the message of the gospel to the Muslim people. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 10, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Won't you consider helping us increase the harvest? If you have a heart for reaching Muslims and also want to help us continue bringing this program to you, we'd like to encourage you today to become a Call of Love partner. You can start with a $25 monthly gift. Call us now or donate on our website. Let us together reach the least and the lost with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take action today and I dare you to love Muslims. He was direct and frank. You are not Muslim anymore. Your blood is halal. It's your time to leave. You have to die. We announced to the family that anybody see you can kill you. Kareem is one of many former Muslims who are cut off from their family and threatened to be killed for embracing Christ. When you partner with Call of Love Ministries, you help us support persecuted believers like Kareem, who gave up everything to follow Jesus. Your monthly tax-deductible gift of $25 or more helps empower persecuted believers. Call now, 832-220-4040, or go to daretolove.tv and click on Donate to start your partnership. I understand now how He loves me, how He came for me, how He crucified Himself for me. Learn more about our ministry on our website, daretolove.tv. You'll find a number of helpful, free resources, including online books and articles, as well as our radio and television programs, and why not check out our online store with all of the tools you need to get started reaching out to Muslims in your neighborhood. And feel free to contact us with your comments and questions. We'd love to hear from you. It's all on our website, daretolove.tv, daretolove.tv. If you enjoy watching Dare to Love, please consider partnering with us. Your monthly gift of $25 or more will help us continue producing this program and reaching Muslims for Christ. Call us now at 832-220-4040, 832-220-4040, or donate online at daretolove.tv. Dare to Love Muslims is made possible by the friends and partners of Call of Love Ministries. An immigrant and refugee. That just raised a lot of anger and frustration in my heart. Mm. Uh, towards the Jews, because we believe they are the one who caused us to be uh, immigrants and refugees. Mm. So when we lost the war of 1967, uh, I decided to go and fight, and my father didn't want me to do that. How old were you? I was almost 17. I was not even 17. Mm. So I asked my father's permission, and he said, no, you continue your education. We're giving them a lot of money. Mm. And I didn't listen, so I ran away from home and joined Yasser Arafat. He was my hero. Turned into a jihadist sniper born in the Gaza Strip? My special guest today, Taz Sada, will answer this question and more. He's a former Muslim who, as a teenager, joined the Fatah Palestinian forces that was founded by Yasser Arafat to wage war against Israel. Brother Taz, welcome to the show today. It's so good to be with you, Samia. Thank you. Thank you. 
Let's start from the beginning so that uh, whoever is watching us today will know where you are from, where you were born, and who is your family. Uh, my family originally come from the city of Jaffa near Tel Aviv. Uh, they've lived there for centuries. But before the war of 1948, they uh, moved to uh, the Gaza Strip to escape the war, basically, hoping to return. But uh, as we all know, they lost the war. Mm. And so they got stuck in Gaza, and that's where I was born, the Gaza Strip. What uh, was the religion or the faith you were born into? Islam, of course. Islam. Yeah, I was a Muslim. When do you remember starting to practice Islam, like the five-day prayer, the fasting? Do you remember when you started? Well, since I was a little kid, you know, maybe six, seven years old, I, I would follow my father, just imitate my father, basically. Mm. Yeah, I love my father, so I, I followed his steps. When he went to pray, I went with him to the mosque. And, mm. and my father was not really a very devout uh, Muslim. Uh, but on Fridays, he went to the mosque. Mm. I don't recall. We did Ramadan, and Ramadan, we fasted. They fasted. I, I didn't fast very much mm -hmm. as a kid. Tell me about uh, your teenage years. Did you ever go back to Gaza or to Palestine, or where did you spend it? Well, uh, growing up in, in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, being referred to as a Palestinian, Coming up on Dare to Love Muslims. He was a sniper fighting against the Israeli army for his homeland Palestine under the leadership of Yasser Arafat. Now he's helping Muslims live for Jesus. Join us today as Samya talks with Taz Sada about life growing up Muslim in the Middle East, his eventual move to the US and conversion to Christianity. It's an encouraging story you won't want to miss. Hi, I'm Samia Johnson, bringing you a new way to think about our Muslim neighbors. Is it possible for God to change the heart of a Muslim, turn